Treasury Building is a very, very large building. If you actually walk the halls of Treasury, you, you, you can get a sense of the magnitude of the building. It takes up one entire city block. It's four sort of different building campaigns. You have a lot of layers of history. It really is a wonderful, historic building with, with an architecture of simplicity and strength that I think symbolizes American economic policy. The cash room was of a special importance because that's where the banking business of the, of the country was done at one time. And just as the, the building itself symbolizes economic policy and the strength of our country and the strength of our financial system, so too does the cash room more particularly symbolize all that historic significance. The Treasury Building reflects a certain stability, yet also, since it's neoclassical, it's a new beginning. And that really fits in well with certainly the country in the 19th century and in a country that's rapidly growing to have this sense of permanence, but yet look at what can be achieved. And I think all these elements probably help the nation explain itself to itself. I don't think the Treasury Building is appreciated to the extent that it should be appreciated by the American people. So much of our rich history was made here in the Treasury Building. Architecturally, the building grew. Uh, it grew with the Office of the Supervising Architect. Its many extensions saw three different architects working in the same style, the Greek Revival style, but working with different sort of spatial needs, spatial demands, and also new building technology. The character of the building has changed over time, but when it was planned, it was planned as a symbol, if you will, of American finance, of the economy at that time. And in its growth, it continually projects that statement. Over time, its interior has seen different sort of campaigns, different programs, but it's always a building that accommodates the needs of its occupants. As employees demanded more space, the architects would create larger offices. Executive offices requiring less space receive smaller offices. It's this give and take within the interior of the building. This has been an extremely historical building in the history and development of the United States of America. This was where Andrew Johnson had his office after the assassination of President Lincoln. It was also uh, an underground bomb shelter when Franklin Roosevelt was president. It was the uh, uh, location of the inaugural ball of Ulysses S. Grant. So uh, there's an extraordinarily rich and varied history for this building. The national banking system was born here. The national currency was born here. Internal Revenue Service was born here. So a lot of things have happened in and around the Treasury building over its many years. Probably the one that stands out for me, which may not at first sight seem tied to the Treasury Building, was the suffragette parade that happened in March 1913, just before Wilson's inauguration. The parade was put on by Alice Paul, who was trying to get the amendment passed. And it started at, at the Capitol and ended up at the Treasury Building. And this was a major turning point in the suffrage movement. And it really made an impact on the country. And to tie the Treasury to something that's as non-financial as women getting the vote, I think is very interesting. Treasury Department was perhaps the first department to employ women on a large scale. The Treasury brought them into various positions, including industrial positions with the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, clerical positions throughout all the reaches of the Treasury. And during the Civil War, women made their mark as employees when, at one point, the, the treasurer, who was Francis Spinner, was walking around the office watching all these guys sign notes, and he thought, this isn't quite right. He said, these men should have muskets in their hands and be at the front and not sitting around cutting notes apart and signing pieces of paper. He got permission from Secretary Chase to bring in a past tutor of one of his daughters, and she was a note clipper. 
and she produced double to triple what the men had done on a regular basis. And that pretty much settled the issue. And from then on, all women were employed in, in processing notes. Treasury building has been replicated, not directly in, in, in fullness, but at least it's been a model for all kinds of structures around the country where the architects were trying to convey this same sense of solidity and strength and, and sort of the history of the country that this building so, so wonderfully projects. And I think the, the best example of that is the 1874 San Francisco Mint Building, which is a kind of a, a miniature version, if you will, of Treasury. It's the sort of the Treasury's North Wing uh, planted in San Francisco with all these technologies. What you get in between, okay, in those sort of other Western states, are these buildings that the Treasury building essentially is a force in introducing technology in all of these little towns. So it was a new sort of American architectural technology heading west, and that's the Treasury building leading the charge, if you will. With the Treasury building, you just never stop learning. There's always another corner to turn. There's always another room that all of a sudden, you know, what happened in this particular space? I remember when I first walked into the building and I was secretary, I had a feeling of being part of something that went way back before me. I really did feel the history, that I was sort of part of a long line. And that line represented something and something very important and very serious. It is a building that it just doesn't stop exuding its architectural character, at least to me as an architectural historian. And every day I come into the building and you know, I breathe its charm, I breathe its depth, I breathe the air of classicism, if you will. And it's, it's a good air. I feel good about it. I think the Treasury Building is underappreciated and uh, unsung.